Hello everyone, I'm Ian from Creative Visuals and today I'm going to be going over ND filters. Now when I first got into photography and videography, I didn't even care about them, but after a while I started seeing that other people were using them and I bought some and I think I did it completely wrong and I don't want you guys to make the same mistake as I did. So with all that in mind, let's get right into this video, how to buy ND filters for photography and videography. Let's get right into this. Okay, so I thought the best way to start this out would just be to tell you guys exactly what I did and why I believe what I did wasn't necessarily the best thing I could have done. So basically, I when I started photography and videography, I didn't even care about it, didn't even know what the heck an ND filter was. And after some time, I started to learn after watching many user videos that a lot of people use ND filters. So I thought there has to be some merit to that. They're not just using them for fun. So I went and picked myself up one. This is the one right here that I got. The first ND filter that I bought It is a 40.5 millimeter ND8 filter. So the funny thing is this is actually for the smallest lens that I own. So it literally only works on one of my lenses. And that's a problem uh, as well. It's not variable. It's just stuck at ND8. You can't change how much light it lets in. It's just stopping the set amount of light. So with all that in mind, this is not very versatile, but it's the cheapest option. And it's probably what's going to come up when you search ND filters on Amazon or anything. So it's probably the one that you're going to pick up if you don't know what you're doing or you just want to get one and you know the size of your filter on your lens. But I think this is a mistake to buy the exact one. There are cases where buying a specific ND filter such as an ND1000 may be good, especially for photographers who want to do long exposures to have a set amount of light, get 10 stops, whatever you want to stop out the amount of light you need to stop out to get long exposures in the daytime. For videographers, on the other hand, I do think the loss in detail by getting a variable ND filter is worth it because you get that versatility to decide how much light you want to let in and out. But this is the big kicker. This is the thing that really changed my mind about ND filters and made me pick up one that was more expensive. Because before I thought that the only way to get ND filters for your lenses was to buy a ND filter for every single lens you have. And that would mean this, this one here was about $20. It's an ND8, like I said, 40.5 millimeter filter thread. That would mean that I would have to spend at least $20 on every single lens for every single exposure value if I want to get the best quality. Because like I said, if you're using variable ND filters, it actually degrades the quality of your image. But it's actually worth it when it comes to videography because then you can switch on the fly. It, this small amount of detail loss is worth it, in my opinion, when you're doing video and it's just about the only way to do video. For photographers, on the other hand, like I said, buying a specific filter might be worth it for you. But that's what I want to go over right now and that is filter size. So, like I said, this is a 40.5 millimeter and the one I actually have now is a 67 millimeter. And the reason I got one that is so much bigger than my lens is, is because you can buy one filter and then you can get a set of, just not one sec, these. So these are basically step up rings. And basically what they do is switch whatever size your lens is to the size of the filter. Now you can also get step down rings if your filter is smaller, but that gets kind of tricky because then you can get vignetting and whatnot. So I do like the step up filters that I have here, these rings. And basically they're just little metal rings. I bought them on Amazon. This whole pack was about 18 Canadian dollars. And I got them all the way from around 37 millimeters up to 67. So that is a lot of versatility right there. So by buying a 67 millimeter uh, filter, which I will go over why I bought this one in particular in a second. But anyways, by buying these, you can buy one filter and then use it on all of your lenses. And that was the beauty of it because these variable ND filters are even more expensive. This one cost me around $40 on Amazon. So buying $40 for each and every one of your lenses, that's going to add up very quickly. So by buying these, you basically take out the need to buy them for different lenses. You can just buy the one for your biggest lens and then from there get step up rings and 
basically adapt the filter to each and every one of your lenses very if it's if you have the money to buy all of the different filters for every single lens it's going to be easier buy them but if you don't and you're looking to save some money because they are expensive i would really recommend these fill these step up rings because they have saved me a lot of money and i'm loving them so far there's really no issue to them and they're really easy especially just to make one filter work for all your lenses so now i want to go over exactly why i got a 67 millimeter nd filter for video and basically my thinking behind that was that i wanted to get it for the biggest lens that i'm ever going to purchase i think at least for my APS-C Sony A6500 body and that would be the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4 uh, I have the 30 mil and I have a 50 mil so I think the 16 will probably be the next one for a wide angle lens and it is the biggest filter thread I've seen which is 67 millimeters hence why I bought this so that when I do buy that lens I will have a filter that I can just put on without the adapters but for now for all my other lenses I can just use the adapter and use it across all of my lenses all the way down to my 40.5 millimeter kit lens with the step up ring so that right there is the beauty of it you can just adapt it to all your lenses but this is what I want to go over now for ND filters if you're thinking about picking one up which one should you get should you get variable or not variable and what size should you get so let's start off with the size I would recommend picking up some step up filters step up rings get them first and choose them so to make sure that you can adapt it to all your lenses in the list you can find them on Amazon I will leave links in the description so make sure that the ND filter that you get for your camera the filter size is as big as the biggest lens you either have or the biggest one you want so then you can adapt it to all the smaller lenses that you have with the step up rings so basically just look at the biggest look at your filter sizes they're on the end of your lenses or you can find them on the website if you're looking to buy one and just make sure that the filter you get is the size of that I would recommend it for both variable and non-variable ND filters so now with that out of the way, you know what size you're going to get. You got your step up rings. Now, what filter should you get? Should you get variable or just a static ND filter? And I think that answer to your question is you may need both if you're doing photography and videography. If you're doing just videography, I would recommend this, the variable ND filter. And if you're doing just photography, I would recommend just a static ND filter. Now my reasoning behind this is with the variable ones you do lose some quality but it's worth it because then on the fly you can change your um how much light you're stopping coming into your lens how much how dark it is basically with the non-variable ones they are cheaper but you can't change that but you get better quality because there's less glass in between them basically it's just gonna get a bit better images out of it for videography, I think that getting the variable and losing that bit of quality is worth it. I would recommend it. And for photography, I would recommend getting a static one, especially because you're probably going to be getting them for very high exposures, like 10 stops, ND1000s, to stop out a lot of light to get some long exposure shots, or at least that's how I would usually do it. If you don't care about the tiny drop in quality, just get a variable one. It'll do you for videography and photography. But if you're looking to do some long exposures, get an ND1000 or higher and get that nice 10 stop of down so that you can really slow down that shutter speed and get those nice buttery smooth uh, long exposure shots even in the daytime. But now with all that out of the way, other than what I just said there about doing long exposures for photography, for videography, why the heck do you even want an ND filter? If that's what you're asking yourself, I want to show you this right now. So I have my camera set up here. I'm shooting at 24 frames per second and I have the shutter speed set to double that. So 50 one fiftieth of a second. I'll show you right here what happens if I jack up that shutter speed. Just a sec. Okay, so now we are at one two thousandth of a second. As you can see, I have some lines here because these lights just aren't fast enough for that shutter speed but i think you can tell the difference look at the motion blur look at that jagged edges there's there's look at the lack of motion blur there it doesn't look right this isn't how it should look because there's just the shutter speed is too high for the frame rate it's getting jagged there's no motion blur now if i slow down that shutter speed and do the exact same thing all the way down to 150th using your uh using your 180 degree rule we put the ISO back down. Now look at that. 
See, there's a nice motion blur and it looks pleasing to the eye. And that right there is why you want ND filters for video. If you're shooting and you don't want to bring down that aperture, you want to keep the nice shallow depth of field and bright conditions. If you don't use an ND filter, it's going to look jagged on the edges. If you use an ND filter, you get this nice smooth motion blur. That right there is why you want to use them. And like I said, for photography, maybe you want to slow down that shutter speed to get things like long exposure shots because they are absolutely beautiful. And the only way to achieve that in the daytime is to use an ND filter, preferably ND 1000 or higher, just to stop down that much light. There is a lot of light out there in the daytime and you need to stop it down a lot to get those nice long exposure shots. So I hope this answered your question for ND filters. Just a quick wrap, wrap up here. First thing, get some step up filters. Make sure that each of them fit on all your lenses. Make sure that the filter sizes match and make sure that when you're buying an ND filter, the filter size of that filter is as big as the biggest lens you have or the biggest one you plan on getting. So then you can adapt it to all your smaller lenses. It's easier to adapt a big filter to a small lens than the other way around because then there is vignetting. Make sure that you get the biggest filter for the biggest lens you either have or, or are planning to get. From there, if you're going to get a variable ND filter or a static ND filter, it depends on your needs. If you're doing videography, I would recommend a variable ND filter. And if you're just doing photography, I would recommend a 10 stop or higher ND filter, something like an ND 1000 or higher. So you can stop out as much light as possible and get those long exposure shots. Things to remember, you're going to get better detail out of a static sh static. Uh, things to remember, you're going to get better detail out of a static ND filter because there's less glass but and it is going to cost less, but then it's not as versatile. On the other hand, if you use a variable one, it's going to cost more. You are going to lose a bit of detail, but it is very versatile and you can do a lot more with it, especially for videography. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to leave a like down below. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you don't miss any new videos. I upload every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. Thank you guys for watching. I will talk to you in the next one and have a great day.